the tech industry is going through a major adjustment in 2023. The onset of the pandemic brought about high demand for certain cloud-based industries, such as communication platforms, media platforms, and social networks. This led to major tech companies going on a hiring spree, expecting continued growth over many years. However, as 2022 and 2023 progress, there has been a decline not only in tech-related revenue, but in purchases in general, shifting the economy towards a recession. This downturn is having an even greater effect on the tech industry because they stood to benefit the most during the pandemic. They are adjusting for the overinvestment they made through the past few years. Just to name a few, Facebook has laid off 11,000 employees, Microsoft will lay off 10,000 by the end of March. Amazon has laid off 18,000 employees. Twitter reduced its workforce by 50%, and Stripe and Salesforce are both making big cuts. Now, you may be wondering, does this mean that if you're looking for a software engineering job in 2023, you're absolutely out of luck? Well, the good news is that the answer is no. Although larger companies have slowed down hiring in general, there are still specific teams hiring. Additionally, this is also a great opportunity for smaller companies and startups to snag great candidates who are either looking for their first job or have been affected by the recent layoffs. All right, guys, future Utsav here. I recorded this video um, a couple of weeks ago, and obviously this past weekend, if you haven't heard, uh, there was a massive bank collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which means there are major implications of this to especially smaller startup, if not the startup sector in the US in general. The rest of the tips that I give in the video are still applicable because I'm giving you tips to get a job in a tricky uh, economic situation. So even though startups may not be hiring, as I mentioned earlier, in this video because of the SVB collapse, the tips I give in this video is uh, still applicable. Uh, if you are interested in what happened in SVB and what the impacts to, could be in the tech world, um, definitely check the video out that I published uh, a few days back. But other than that, rest of the video should be good. So what can you do to position yourself well to land that elusive tech job in 2023? Well, the first thing to do is to make sure you know the hottest areas in tech. If you aren't marketable in the first place, a bad job market is only going to make it harder for you to land a job. I've recently published a video where I talk about the top programming language to learn in 2023 based on demands, salaries, developer affinity, and future prospects. So definitely check that video out. And make sure you have mastered at least one or more programming languages from that list. In addition to that, I cannot stress enough the importance of understanding distributed systems and machine learning. I also have a detailed video on this topic where I give you tips on learning them, including book recommendations, free as well as paid resources. So definitely check that video out for details as well. Okay, so you've covered your basis in terms of being up to date in your learning. Uh, so what's next? Well, you need to be ready for your interview just in case you need to. As far as the interview process goes, it remains largely the same coding, system design, and behavioral. But don't just rush to get a job interview. Instead, do an honest self-assessment of where you stand and make a reasonable timeline accordingly. Consistency is key. Even if it's just 30 minutes a day, practice every day. Ideally, you should spend at least one to two hours so that you have enough time to finish at least one to two coding questions or one system design or one behavioral session and still have time to review. In the interest of saving your and my time, I'm not gonna repeat this whole interview process again. Uh, I do have a three-part video series on the full interview prep process that covers everything from coding, system design, and behavioral interviews and provides you with the structure and framework you need to succeed. So go check that one out. I'll also link it in the description below. Don't worry, you won't ask for a credit card. Everything is free. That being said, I do want to make a few notes in this video about preparation. New software engineers tend to be better at coding since they're fresh out of college. However, they will often ignore behavioral interviews. Especially in a time like this where jobs are few and far between, companies will pay extra attention to culture fit. So you need to be paying extra attention to that as well. However, if you are an experienced engineer, you are probably good with the behavioral side and the system design side of things. But chances are likely that you don't code a lot. So you will need to pay extra attention in brushing up your coding because uh, you will still be expected to ace the coding aspect of the interviews. And finally, for engineering managers, generally don't have to do coding interviews and are usually good with behavioral interviews. So you need to be focusing on improving your system design skills, unless you're already a very technical manager. Because most modern tech companies will expect engineering managers to understand distributed architectures as well. 
the trick here is to be prepared before you actually feel the pressure to have to interview. Because when you have to, you're running against the clock, finances, and so many other variables. Don't take me wrong. I'm not encouraging you to switch your jobs. If you love your job, stay. I love my team and I'm happy here. But that does not mean that you should stop brushing up your skills to be marketable in the industry. And it's always easy to continually do things instead of doing them when you actually need them. Look, all this may be too much to manage. I understand that's the part I think most people struggle with. How do you structure your program? How do you manage your time? How do you track your progress? Which companies to apply for? How to get references? If you want a more structured approach, personalized for you to help you stay marketable in the job market, one great option is Formations Fellowship Program. Formation have also sponsored this video and have been a long-term supporter of this channel. Formation is an online fellowship for early to mid-career software engineers who want to join top companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, and more. Formation uses adaptive learning technology to create a custom program for all its fellows, tracking their progress and closing skill gaps on a personalized learning roadmap. They also have a top tier team of engineers from Meta and Nextdoor who have interviewed thousands of candidates and trained hundreds of interviewers during their tenure. Also, you guys know how much I stress the importance of mentorship in career progression, as well as the immense value mock interviews provide when prepping for job interviews. Well, Formation provides engineering mentorship and unlimited mock interviews until you've got a signed offer letter in hand. Formation isn't just about prepping you for clearing the interviews. Their fellows leave the program with the knowledge and confidence to thrive at the world's leading companies. On average, fellows who complete the program increase their compensation by $96,000. So as you can see, a program like Formation's Fellowship can be immensely beneficial to software engineers, especially so during an uncertain time like right now. So if you're interested in checking Formation's Fellowship program, you can apply for free on their website through the link in the description below. And regardless of whether you you are accepted into the program or not, you get invaluable career advice from their assessment and a free interview prep guide that's really useful uh, resource for your interviews, especially at FANG level companies. Thanks again to Formation for sponsoring this video. Okay, whether you're doing it on your own or you decide to pursue a program like Formations, one other important thing to remember is to network, network, and network. This is how you find out who's hiring or even better, what specific team is hiring. And right about now, you may be thinking, how do I go about networking with people that I've never met? Well, here are a few tips. The first thing you need to do is expand your network. So this can be done by reaching out to people who have worked with you in the past. It's always a good idea to keep in touch with your contacts once in a while. You should genuinely check on them, say hello, and even meet for a coffee. By doing so, you establish a two-way relationship and build trust. This can come in handy when you actually need to ask a favor as it does not seem like a one-way favor. It really works both ways. Another thing you can do to improve your chances is to ensure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date. You can check out my resume video on how to write good resumes, but the gist of it is to list out your accomplishments, not just your job responsibilities. This gives recruiters and hiring managers a better idea about your strengths and the value that you bring to their team. Additionally, you can ask for recommendations on LinkedIn if you have worked with someone who you think will provide positive feedback for you. Next, it is important to figure out your market profile and where you stand in the job market. For example, you may be a senior at your company, but you may just be level two in some other company. Or if you are a level two in some top tech company, you may be equivalent to a senior engineer at a smaller company. You can use tools like levels.fyi to find the right level for your experience and skills. After that, you should identify the companies that are hiring and the companies that you want to join. Uh, these may not be the same given the current job market situation, so you can do some research online and find out which companies are actively hiring and which ones align with your career goals and values. Then leverage LinkedIn to find recruiters and hiring managers from those companies and message them directly. As I mentioned before, there may be a company-wide hiring freeze, but specific teams could still be hiring. So there's no harm in sending a message. The worst that can happen is they will not respond to you or say no. However, make sure that you clearly mention who you are, what your qualifications are, and why you're interested in working for their company or even better, their team. It is important to be precise and avoid sending a generic email that looks like it has been copy pasted a hundred times. Instead, be specific to that team and mention what you like about their work. Also, please don't send a message saying hi or hi, can I ask you a question or something like that. Um, get to the point so that you respect their time. And finally, if you have been impacted by your recent layoff, mention that in your message or even post it as your status on LinkedIn. There is no shame in being laid off. 
Remember, layoffs cut positions, not people. And even great software engineers get laid off. So don't feel ashamed to mention that you got laid off. It may even work in your advantage as it shows that you're motivated to find a new opportunity and are open to new challenges. Well, that's all the tips I have for you to help you stay marketable in this tricky environment. I hope that you actually don't have to look for a job and you're happy and fulfilled wherever you are. But in case things do go south, I hope these tips come in handy. And these tips just don't apply to software engineers, but to any position in any area. Let me know in the comments below if you have some tips of your own that you'd like to share with the rest of the community. Please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel for more software engineering content. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.